Moon Tours. And we've done 6,600 kilometers with the AOR Sierra ZR behind us. It is the very first one to come off the production line. We drove it out of the showroom, straight to the Simpson Desert, and then we gave it a real hard time on corrugations up to Uluru, Darwin, and now we're in Arnhem Land, camped on the beach. Now before I go into showing you how incredibly cool and tough and what great value for money this thing is, I just want to say this is the first one. There's a couple of little things that uh, will be tweaked on. There's always some teething issues and some things are never, never perfect. But overall, this thing is absolutely epic. Now, the kitchen comes standard with the slide out drawer and the sink and this for all your cutlery and, and whatnot. This has been a tricky one for us because it's designed to have a stove here. Now, we love our, we love our Coleman stove, but it's a high pressure stove and the trailer's been plumbed uh, with two gas outlets down here, but they're on a regulator, so that's low pressure gas. And our little Coleman stove doesn't work on that, so we've had to do a bit of a rejig on that one. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've got your stove here, this is your cutlery drawer, and you're always in it. So this is a tricky one. If you're cooking on your stove there, even if it's a low-line stove, you've got a pot on it or something, it, it, it is hard to move it. So, look, it's difficult to fit everything in a small trailer, so you need to consider that. So what we've done anyway, is we basically put our Coleman down here. It gives us a bit more bench space up here anyway, which is good, it's fine. Come standard with one fridge slide. This extension though is optional and that's something we opted for. I'm glad we did because we're using it a lot. You can fit pretty big fridges on here. We're running our ARB Elements fridge on there. There's outlets behind the, in the fridge sort of cavity there to plug into. All the slides, bearings and stuff have been good. We've given them a real good test. A lot of weight and also a lot of corrugations and heavy bouncing across the desert. So everything is on that front has held up really, really well. Back to the kitchen. You can see the, sh the shape of the trailer. You know, it's pretty funky and wild and it's like that for a reason to make it capable off-road and to give you as much storage as you can. So some of the storage is a bit, you know, angled and thing in there, but there is a lot of it. And you've just got to play with it and make it work, you know. You've got these adjustable shelves in here. You've got a couple of shelves at the back and then all the storage in there. We'd probably want to... We'll probably put something across here, some kind of bungee or whatever, to, to kind of help us keep it. But you figure that out as you go. I mean, it's, it's not a deal breaker. It's just you've got to do what you do when you've got a camper. It comes with uh, the two 40 volt outlets here comes with a 12 volt cigarette plug lighter there and a USB there. This is the fin scan and the fin scan is basically the brain's management control system uh, to the trailer. Now, it does all sorts of cool stuff. We can check our tanks using our 140 at the moment. We're about half left plus our 60. Now, it's been a week. So now we can also check our batteries. You know, we see we've got 97% left with 13 volts, blah, blah, blah. All right toggle through you can have our standard it comes with one 100 amp hour lithium battery we've opted up and got two lithium batteries they're joined in parallel with each other so you don't see two batteries on the fin scan this fin scan is really really cool it's an Australian made product uh, coming out of New South Wales Sydney really really good it, wireless uh, Wi-Fi to your phone so you can control all the lights and everything from your phone you can turn pumps on tank whatever switches lights this is standard as well you can either have an orange light or you can make it a yellow light and there's external lights on the front back here I would probably prefer to see a bit more lighting here in the kitchen area for, for, for us I think that you know, we're adding some lights here and there because it's probably just not quite enough and there's no light inside the pantry. So I'd probably like to see a little bit more lighting here, but it's a pretty minor thing. Now, power. 
The fin scan's awesome and it controls everything. All right, it, control, it controls whatever. It just controls everything, all right? But what it doesn't do, it does manage your battery system, but it's not an inverter. So we've put in a projector IntelliWave inverter, which is a 2000 watt uh, pure sine wave inverter. If you don't know what pure sine wave is, just when you buy an inverter, just make sure that it's pure sine wave. Yeah. Now, this is, I'll show you the units of the fin scan and the projector over in the cupboard over there in a minute, but this unit here has got a little screen on it. It's the creme de la creme of inverters, really. Yeah, we can check uh, the volts. We can check how much load in watts is coming off it. I can turn it on and off right from this screen here. So it's super handy because we don't want to run the inverter all the time when it's not necessary because when, you, when you're running an inverter, it is drawing current from the batteries at a much higher rate than uh, normal 12 volt sort of stuff. So having that is really, really handy. All right. Get the, get the extension because you'll want it, definitely. Now, things get a little bit tight here and I think it'll be rectified on uh, newer models and it'll be a pretty simple fix. But what we found is this door here, you can see that when it's wide open, there's not much gap between the fridge slide and the door. And the problem is when the fridge comes past, well, even just this hand, you can see it's got a bit ripped up there and then it hits here and we've actually damaged the door. Now, if the door swung back and stayed there, whether it had a clip or a hook on it or something or whatever, but as soon as it gets pushed in there, the fridge slide hits it and it's damaged it a bit. Anyway, that's some feedback there, I suppose, but other than that, I mean, great. They come standard with the uh, Cooper Evolution Mud Terrain tires, which are great tire. It comes standard with a uh, 60 litre tank and we've opted up to get a second 140 litre tank. So we're carrying 200 litres in the trailer, which is a lot of water, especially for a trailer this size. So you can see the tanks are covered in a stainless steel uh, protective kind of cover, but the tanks themselves are poly and they're super strong. So even when they get hit, they, they can just bend in. We've, we've got fuel tanks in our car made from similar product. It's got great suspension. The chassis is excellent. Excellent work quality as far as welding and construction goes. It's uh, coated inside and out of the chassis. It's got really good independent twin shock suspension. And again, the suspension arms have all been finished with a hammer tone to uh, protect them. All the wiring and all the uh, plumbing and, and whatnot is all hidden up high so it's not exposed when you're off-road good recovery points on the back as well it's got stabilizer uh, bars on the front and back and look these ones here they're probably a bit flimsy for my mind they have we, we've kind of bent them a bit but anyway they're, they're quite light duty but they you don't really need a lot of support at the back of this thing the way it's weighted so that's that all these doors they're basically at least twin locked. And one of the biggest standout features with AOR is that all their campers are 100% dust proof. I know it's hard to believe because in the Australian bush, our red dirt, it just gets in like everywhere. We've had both extremes now. We've had their smallest camper out across central Australia and up to the top end here in some really tough, hot, dusty conditions. No dust, perfect. We also had their biggest van, the Matrix, in Cape York. And that was a big, big trip, tough, hard, dusty. And every night Jill would get the white glove out and wipe the benches, see if there's dust, but no dust. So that's impressive. And what they do, as a matter of fact, is in the factory, they um, pressure test them. So they fill them with like a smoke machine and then put about five pounds of pressure inside the van and look around to see if there's any leaks coming out and that's how they test them, see if they're dust proof or not. So if you're in deep water, I guess, and everything's shut, eh, lots of ants. There's like an ant fen frenzy going on here. Um, if you're in deep water, I guess good because like, they'll float, yeah. Up the front, big storage. 
again, we've got like eight, um, eight recovery tracks in here, a couple of jerrys, we keep the jockey wheel in here, and a few other things. All these little cupboards have got lights in them that you can manually turn on and off. They come standard with a Anderson plug power outlet and an Anderson plug solar inlet here. And the fin scan uh, is also a solar regulator so you can just run straight through the fin scan with the solar. They come with a DO35 hitch. Basically, if you don't know what that is, if you're buying a camper trailer that doesn't have a DO35 hitch, then you should ask why not and you should get one put on. We use the Max Trax uh, trailer skid as like our jockey wheel support. It's actually a recovery device, but it works well, especially if the ground's a bit soft or it's undulating or whatever. Twin gas bottle storage at the front. See up here, our tyres. At the back, there's a big storage unit there and, and the spare for the trailers here, and it was underneath, but to me, that just didn't make sense. Or I take up a dustproof storage with a truck with a tire. So we got them to put it up here and they strengthened the roof and they put islands in to mount it. This area up here is incredible. Great for putting firewood in, great for throwing the max tracks in between recoveries. You know, we keep our rubber floor mats up there and it's just, it's actually one of the most unique things about the, the camper, I reckon. It's so good to have that storage. This rack here is standard as well, comes with them, super heavy duty, long. You can put two rooftop tents on it if you want, solar, whatever. It's a really, really good uh, design, that, very unique. But we haven't been running a stone guard or anything, we just run standard mud flaps on the vehicle. Uh, the, what I do like though, they've gone to town with this extra heavy duty uh, rubber flap there and one across the front as well. And that is really gonna protect stones and everything getting flown up underneath there and chipping away all the paint off the, off the chassis and the suspension and all that sort of stuff. The heavy duty stabiliser arms at the front just work like any other van. I like the way they've sheared this off. You can see a few stones have been hitting this but this um, paint that they use is incredibly durable. It's like, a, it's like an armour coating almost, you know. They keep it sort of bare bones from you so you can add your stuff you know like we added our projector inverter we threw our rooftop tent on there so you can bring a lot of your own stuff we're using our own stove for example we added the awning bought that ourselves but all those things so that's really good another big storage pantry in there now it's the same size as the other one and if we want to we can put a fridge slide in there and have two fridges at the moment we're just using that for um, food storage and stuff when we first looked at it the batteries were mounted in here but we wanted to have the option of um, putting a second fridge in so we got them to move the batteries this here is not standard uh, we asked for this to be added on uh, because you just need all the bench space you want so i think um, you know it should be an option available to, to everyone because it's super super handy we, we use these benches all the time and if these just folded down we'd have nothing there so this cupboard here, for us anyway, has kind of become our electrical cupboard. We, you know, we charge drones and cameras and gimbals and all sorts of stuff in here, computers and, and whatnot. So in here's all the electrical stuff and the water filters. They come with twin water filters. This is the, uh, the fin scan unit, the nucleus, the, the brains, and that's the power core uh, management system down there 240 volt uh, fuses trip switches and the taps for the tank and the um so it's all pretty easy to get to which is good as well more storage yes it's uh you know adjustable shelves like on the other side uh orange and white light you can control from your phone or the other side there whereas these cupboards have got internal switches on them not much has to say really it's just more storage we opted to get the shower unit from them which meant a couple of things. One, this gas outlet here is standard and it's there for the shower. This is a new uh, product that they're using with the AOR Sierra. So we actually need to change this hose to have this fitting on it. Uh, for you guys, when, you, when you're ordering your new ones, you'll have a hose that'll run straight in there 
and you won't need to put the gas bottle there, but we're just doing that for now. You got hot and cold water there, so when the when this hot water system is plumbed up to the gas here uh, with that gas hose, we can actually uh, plug the hot water straight into here. We could do it now if we wanted, but it's, I guess, but it's just so hot we haven't bothered. It's about 38 degrees up here every day at the moment. So that hot water then will come out at the sink, so you can have hot water at the sink as well. Awesome hot water unit. Love it. It's really, really cool actually. It's automatic, it turns on, it flies. It just, it's easy, it's reliable and it's good. Shower tent. Again, super, super easy to, uh, to put out and put back in. It takes no time at all. It comes with a light and there's a power outlet here as well that's standard. More storage. This storage here goes right back in there. Massive amounts of storage. I think that's one of the things that really stand out on this thing. Here we go, here's another huge storage space in here. Now, this is where the batteries have ended up. You've got this storage space in here as well. That opens and it's a long sort of tube. So we've got our two batteries in there. So this is your two batteries, your, your water connections, not your fill points, but your water connections. So you've got your shower and also your hot water for your sink and your shower there. So we are waiting and soon enough you'll see from us, we're gonna have, um, a new rooftop tent from the Bush Company, same storage boxes we use. He just does the best rooftops and it's gonna make the AOR Sierra a luxury hardcore off-road van with that, uh, it's called the Black Max Extreme that they do. So we've got that coming, which is stoked. And he also does an awning as well, which is super heavy duty. It doesn't even have poles, you don't peg it out. So we're gonna probably end up getting one of them as well. Well, that's kind of a walk around the camper. Now, it's fiberglass with like aluminium sheet, you know, sandwich. So, well, it does a couple of things. One, it makes it very light. It's under nine, it's under a ton. I think it's 900 kilos dry weight uh, standard. And then it's a 1800 kilo max. So you've got a 900 kilo payload when you start adding stuff to it, it's got a massive payload. But also that sandwich, this sort of fiberglass sandwich construction is good insulator. It's a really, really good insulator. Stuff inside doesn't get hot, you know, it stays cool. So that's been, that's been something pretty neat. I, I really like that. The paint, the angles. Now, when you wanna go off road, this thing will go absolutely anywhere your vehicle can muster. Very, very tough. Can take on huge angles. It can take massive hits. It tows really well. We've been towing it at 120 down the bitumen. We're towing high speed on dirt corrugations, washouts. We towed it across the desert and heaps of bumps and dunes. And, and it's it's always been true and, and never, it's never come around to greet us or anything like that. It's towed really, really well. Hey, I see here, ZR. It's an absolutely sick trailer. and even though it's got a couple of little things that need to be uh, worked on, we're still gonna keep this one for ourselves. I forgot to mention and show you our solar actually. So I've got my solar plugged in here. Great wiring, don't worry. No professional did it, it was me. If you pay someone to do it, it'll look much better. But yeah, look at this. So we're running a, we're running a single 135 watt projector solar panel. And that on its own, especially up here because it's so hot, that on its own and just running the fridge and running those lights, that's keeping the two batteries at 100%. So that's working real good. Trailer brakes I didn't mention. There's only one set of trailer brakes. Well, obviously it has electric brakes on the trailer. You need a controller and there's only one and that's the Red Arc Tow Pro. We've got the Elite V3, I think it is here. But they are by far the best to control what you're towing behind your vehicle. They've got great adjustment, especially in the bush under real angles or soft sand or rocky stuff or down, whatever. Just get those, because they're the best. One big thing I didn't mention is probably one of the best bits. One, it's Australian made. And two, that is super cool 
really heavy duty, incredibly capable, far out there camber trailer. It starts at about 30 grand. And that is probably the best value, best quality trailer for that sort of money. So I'm taking it to more crazy places. We're going.